So in this video, I just want to give a brief definition of what a polynomial ring is. You're going to see this sort of notation come up time and time again throughout algebraic geometry, so I thought it might be a good idea to show you um, some examples. So first of all, k with the square brackets x inside means the set of all, or rather the ring, containing all the polynomials whose coefficients are in k, the field k, and in a single variable x. So for example, if k were let's say the field of the real numbers in the variable x, then polynomials like 2x plus x squared or x to the power 10 minus 1 would all belong to rx because its coefficients belong to the real numbers and it's in one variable, i.e. Um, x. So for instance, um, I suppose more generally you could say a polynomial like f of x equals a0 plus a1 times x plus a2 times x squared plus dot 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 plus a sub n x to the n that's a finite polynomial because we're restricting um, the definitions of these to only include finite polynomials that's in k of x the ring of polynomials over k in x if and only if the coefficients a0 a1 all the way up to a n belong to the field k now this is a ring, you can verify that it satisfies the properties of a ring because obviously if you take uh, one polynomial like this and take another polynomial which belongs to kx and you add them together, you're going to get another polynomial which belongs to kx. Likewise, if you do the same thing but with multiplication, if you take this polynomial and you multiply it by another polynomial in kx, you're going to get another polynomial in kx back. And so it's because of that reason that k of x is a ring. It forms a ring under the operations of addition and multiplication. And you can verify that it satisfies the axiomatic properties of a ring. So that's what k of x means. What about k of x, y? Well, the only difference here is that it's in two variables. So in k of x, y, you could have, let's say, g of x is equal to b0 times y plus b1 x squared y cubed plus b2x, for instance. And that belongs to k of x, y as long as its coefficients b0, b1, and b2 are inside the field k. And remember, this field k can be the rational numbers or the real numbers or the complex numbers or any other field, basically. And because of the x, y inside the brackets, it means it's in two variables. If this were in three variables, it would belong to this one over here, k of x, y, and z. So let's look at some examples. So if we look at the first one, Let's look at f of x equals x squared minus 3. What are the coefficients? Well, you've got a coefficient in front of x squared, which is equal to 1, and the constant coefficient is minus 3. Well, 1 and minus 3 are both real numbers, so automatically they belong to some polynomial ring um, where r is the field, and it's the polynomial ring in one variable because there's only one variable, namely x, appearing in the definition of the polynomial f. It also belongs to q of x because 1 and minus 3 are also rational numbers and equally it also belongs to c of x where c is the field of complex numbers because 1 and minus 3 are also complex numbers. Okay, how about a of x, y defined as x to the power 10, y minus y to the power 10, x? Well, that doesn't belong to r of x. Well, it's certainly true that the coefficients are real. 1 and minus 1, the coefficients of, the, of this polynomial, are real, but it's a polynomial in two variables. It's in variables x and y, and this polynomial ring only refers to polynomials in one variable. Remember, these are also finite polynomials. It does, however, belong to r of x, y. Its coefficients do belong to the field of real numbers, and it's in two variables. And equally, it also belongs to q of x, y, because the coefficients 1 and minus 1 are rational. By the way, it also belongs to r of x, y, z. Although the z doesn't actually appear in this polynomial, what you could do is you could define a of x, y, z to be um, x to the 10, y minus y to the 10, x. And that would actually still be a polynomial inside r of x, y, z. It's just that the coefficients of all the z terms um, are equal to 0. So this still technically lies inside r of x, y, z. In fact, this sort of thing is going to be very common in algebraic geometry. So, for instance, when we look at projective geometry, um, it's quite often that we will see a of x, y, z, but evaluated when z equals 1. And we'll end up with something which belongs to uh, something like the ring of polynomials in only two variables rather than three.
Okay, so that's my short video on what a polynomial ring is and some, and some examples. In the next couple of videos, we'll go through some more definitions of what an affine n space is, along with what uh, terms like algebraically closed means and some other important definitions before we move on to algebraic varieties. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe to my channel for more content just like this. Thanks.